Hello and welcome to the Electrician's Hangout. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the different types of uh, cables that's used in residential uh, wiring. And that's pretty much going to be it for this particular how-to. So I'm going to just jump right in. Uh, the first piece that I'm going to show you is called Romex or NM cable to conductor. With two conductor Romax, what you get is two insulated conductors, a black and a white, and a bare ground conductor. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's not a lot to it. Uh, this particular one, this particular cable here is 12 to. Uh, 12 gauge wire is capable of carrying 20 amps. If you refer back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, I give a basic explanation of wire sizes and ampacity and how it's covered in Article 310.16 in the NEC. So I won't really go into a lot of detail with this how-to about ampacity and AWG wire sizes. But this is 12.2 Romax or the actual name for the cable, the, the code name is Non-Metallic Sheathed Cable. And this is 12-2. This piece of cable here is also Romex or NM cable, non-metallic sheave cable. Uh, it's 14 gauge, so it's a little bit smaller than the 12 conductor. And uh, another thing, you notice one of the cables are yellow and the other one is white. Uh, if you buy a, buy a cable, uh, Anytime in the past, within the past, I'd say three to four years, they started color coding the cables. I'm not going to try to say exactly when they started color coding them because I don't want to tell you something is wrong. I will do the research and get back to you guys on that one. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to go in your house and have wiring that's been in there for 10, 12 years and think that because all of them are white, they're all 14. But Anyways, nowadays, white Romex pretty much is uh, reserved for 14 gauge wire. Yellow is reserved for 12 gauge wire. I believe uh, orange is reserved for 10 gauge wire. Uh, anyways, back to the tutorial there. 14.3 uh, four, is what this is called. With uh, three conductor Romex, you had three insulated conductors and a bare ground. Uh, pretty straightforward, not a lot to it. That's uh, three conductor Romex. This particular cable here is what you want to call UF cable. UF cable is made to be uh, directly buried under the ground. So if you have one of those projects where you're running a, a wire outside, maybe to feed some outside lights or maybe running a, a circuit out to your garage or something of that nature. UF could be the, the wiring method of choice. Uh, it can be directly buried under the ground and the, the insulation around the uh, conductors is sunlight resistant. So, and it's just, it's pretty much the same as the regular NM cable. Uh, this one here is two conductor. As you can see, you have two insulated conductors and a ground. This is a 10 gauge here, which is capable of carrying 30 amps, but uh, that's pretty much it. You know, UF cable, underground cable, is made to be directly buried. And uh, the last cable I'm going to show you guys, I wanted to have uh, one of each. This particular cable is MC cable. Uh, MC cable can be differentiated from AC cable or the trade name BX cable. And you've probably seen seen it around. Uh, the reason it's different is the jacket for MC cable cannot be used as a ground. Hence, the insulated green wire for a ground inside the actual inside the cable jacket. Uh, whereas, if you if this were, and this is a two conductor, so a two conductor MC is going to actually have three insulated conductors. Uh, three conductor. 
MC cable will have four insulated conductors. It will have a black, a white, a red, and the ground. So it's a difference between it and BX cable. BX cable has a thin uh, aluminum wire or steel wire that runs along the inside of the jacket uh, that enables you to use the jacket of the, the cable as a ground. So you don't have the insulated ground. If this were two conductor BX cable, which you would have would just be the black and the white wire. Uh, and the jacket of the cable itself would be uh, used as your grounding conductor. With BX cable, the code requires you to use what's called an anti-short bushing. And I really, really, really should have had an anti-short bushing here to show you guys. I will include it in a future video at some point in time, but today I don't have one here with me. But an anti-short bushing is just a bushing that once you strip the cable, you stick your anti-short bushing in the end so that the cut end of the wire doesn't nick your actual conductors and create a short circuit situation. The code doesn't require you to have an anti-short bushing for MC cable, but I, but I as a general rule of thumb, use anti-short bushings with both MC and BX cable. And I would suggest that you do the same as a really good practice. Uh, and that's pretty much it with MC and BX cable. Again, real quick recap, with MC cable, you're going to have an insulated grounding conductor. That's definitely one way to tell the difference between MC and AC cable. With AC cable or BX cable, you're not going to have that insulated ground because the jacket of the cable is what's used for the actual ground. And to uh, ensure that you have good ground continuity, it has the metal conductor or the steel conductor, really, really small, that runs along the inside of the cable itself. And just another quick tip when you're uh, stripping the, the BX cable and you're using it for whatever you're using it for, the, the steel cable that runs along the inside, you don't have to tie them together or hook them up to anything. You could, if you wanted to, cut it off. I take it, cut it kind of short, and wrap it around the, the spiral of the, the jacket of the cable. That's what I do with it and slide my anti-short bushing in. Well, actually, I slide the anti-short bushing in first and take the uh, steel cable and and bend it over the anti-short bushing and then wrap it around the actual spiral. I will actually make a how-to video specifically for BX and MC cable. That way there's no, no confusion. You guys uh, actually get to see it. See me do it. I'll show you how to strip it with your, your roto splitting tool. And uh, that'll be that. So that's pretty much it for this, this video here, this how-to. I, I hope that it was very helpful. And uh, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can just leave them in the comment section uh, at the bottom of the web page. Also, if there's anything specific that you need, need to know, whether it's with a project that you're working on or one that you're planning on working on, leave a comment and I'll definitely get back to you and uh, perhaps be able to guide you in the right direction. So uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to making the next one. All right, bye-bye.